There's a guy, his name is Casey Rodriguez. We had a riot, and uh, I talk about it in another video, in Dog Unit, when a guy named Green just went berserk. Casey Rodriguez is locked up in his cell, so he starts throwing things at all the staff, books and whatever. As a matter of fact, I looked right at him when he chucked a book at me that said chemistry. I saw the hardback book hit right at me, and I thought, man, it should say physics, and then it hit me in the head because, you know, Connecticut is a transfer from that book to my head. And I thought, wow, it should have said physics. Anyway, Casey's trying to, he's sticking his arm outside of his bars all the time, flinging stuff at the staff. And he, so I started going over there and swinging my nightstick at him. And every time he'd stick his hand out, I'd try to hit it. So he got really frustrated and he grabs the bars like this and he starts shaking them. And I thought, uh oh, you've made a mistake. So I took my stick and I hit it on the back of his hand. Broke three bones in his hand so bad he had to have surgery to repair them. And it broke about that much off the end of my stick, which went skidding down the range. Um, I recovered it before the inmates did. And uh, um, I heard him say a couple of days after his surgery, when he came back, somebody said, Man, why didn't you mess up that officer? He said, That little guy is all man. And I thought, Wow, the entire time that I've been, that I have worked in prison never received a compliment uh, as good as an inmate that said can't do nothing to that guy he's all man best compliment I ever had in all 23 years good morning welcome to as the key turns I'm gonna talk about one of those little incidents that that just happen and sticks in people's minds I had an inmate G unit it was uh, my first couple of years when I started working and we called him Stinky Smith. Stinky Smith had these long greasy uh, dreadlocks and he stunk something off. I mean he stunk to the point where to go into his cell it made me want to throw up. I actually gagged. What, what I'd have to do is I'd I would put handcuffs on him, hold the handcuffs, remove him from his cell, take him to the shower, lock him in. He would take a shower and he would come back. Now on the way back, he still smelled so bad that I have actually gagged. And I noticed that he was dry as a bone. And you got to understand, this is my first couple of years, so I actually cared about things like this. And I decided that he should take a bath, a real one because one day when we put him in there, I observed him and all he did was wash his hands. He washed his feet. And then uh, he would stick his hands in the shower and get enough water to put it in his mouth and rinse his mouth. But the, other than maybe his forearms and his feet, he never got wet. So he really didn't take a shower, not really. And he was, he was uh, smearing pomade, not only in his hair, but all over him, his, his body. I mean, he was just he was just greasy and he smelled really bad. So I nagged him and nagged him and nagged him. And then finally he decided that, uh, you know, I'm just going to kill this officer. So he told me that, you know, you just haven't fallen down dead yet. I'm just going to kill you. And there was an incident where he had an opportunity. The opportunity was I yelled, you know, open six cell and 11. That's the cell this guy was in, open, along with six cell. So I said, close the, close, and six cell shuts, but 11 doesn't. Because there's something malfunctioning about this, this uh, range, and it happened to other officers. So, uh, I walk down there to the cell or where he's at, and I slowly take out my riot baton, and I said, well, now's your chance, and he just put his hands up like this, and he backed up and he stood on his bed, and he just stood there with his hands up until uh, that was kind of the, the end of the incident. I, we got the door to shut, and it locked, and that was kind of the end of it. And uh, one of the other inmates in there, old Sonny Burkett, was laughing. He thought that was extremely funny because he had seen all this drama going on between me and Sticky Smith. 
Well, eventually, Stinky Smith decided that he was gonna actually take a shower. So he got a whole bottle, and I mean, one of them bottles that's like this big. And he went into the shower, and he told me, look, man, I'm really gonna shower if you just quit bothering. So, he took this whole thing, and he, he washed out his dreadlocks, and it was brown. I mean, the, the water that came off of him was brown. Now, what I didn't understand, and why I probably should have never bothered him to take a shower, was because some men, some men, their defense to sexual assault is to smell or be so revolting that no one would want to sexually assault them. I mean, if I saw the most beautiful girl in the world and she smelled to the point where I wanted to throw up, I probably wouldn't lay a hand on her. And that was the, the idea for Stinky Smith. Now, he was locked in G unit, which meant that he was in an isolation cell along with everybody else. So there was really very little chance that he was ever gonna be sexually assaulted. Oh, and while we're talking about it, behind me here, the Americans are coming, supposedly, and uh, supposedly what's getting ready to happen is they're going to put in a hotel, a heliport, and if you could see, I don't know if you can, that's the, uh, that's a tropical sea, the ocean behind me there. So, who knows, maybe I've got property in the, in the right location to make a big profit from the Americans that, that are coming, you know, the Americans. So... Anyway, I thought I'd tell you that story of, uh, of Stinky Smith, and really it was my mistake to require him to, uh, to take this shower. And I learned that much later, because there was a guy that was so fat, so disgusting, that when he actually did take a shower and, and he left, he, he really almost... I almost threw up on his back. He smelled, I smelled people that we pulled out of the river after two months that smelled better than him. He smelled like feces, sweat, and death all rolled into one. The guy was so fat we had to take handcuffs off of him while he was in I unit, which was special housing. And he had to put his hands over his head like this. Put his hands over his head and then take a lunge at the at the cell and push his way through the door. That's how fat he was. And I asked him about it. I said, man, you are so fat that, that you're gonna die. I mean, even the physician assistant said, no, if this guy doesn't lose weight, he's gonna die. And the guy said, I don't care. And I'm like, I didn't understand this and why he was so nasty and, and smell. And he told me, hey, nobody wants to try to sexually assault and he didn't put it that way. Sexually assault a guy that smells like this. For punishment, I used to put people in the cell next to him and they would cry. One guy asked, man, I will wash him myself. Please let me do it. I swear you could beat me to death if I, if I do anything wrong. And no, can't do it, man. You gotta stay in that cell. Uh, so there are people in, in the police supermax that smell so bad that to have them in the same room with you would make you throw up. So somebody asked me about that. Was there ever, you know, who was the most disgusting inmate that you've ever met? That was Pear right there. Both of them are about equally smelly. So, hope you enjoyed this video. And if you do, hit the like button down there, will you? And I promise it will not kill you to subscribe.